Okay, I'm going to show you how to make an AWS Elastic Load Balancer. Actually, I've just made a couple of these today, and I've had to teach myself how to do that. So, this is really notes for myself, but if it helps you, that's really good. Okay, so the steps to doing this is you have to have an AMI image, an Amazon machine image, which we already have. Uh, then you'll need to make a security group. Um, because there's going to be a lot of networking inside um, our load balancer in and around our load balancer so having a nice security group with all the settings in one place that aren't mixed up with others is quite good. Uh, in our case we're going to make an elastic file system so that each of the uh, instances that are running inside the load balancer can share a file system that's something we need to do. Um, then we're going to make a launch template and that will contain the settings with which the AMI image is created automatically so that's a good thing to do. And then we'll make a target group. And the target group is the, um, the pool of instances that the load balancer will access. And um, it actually sits in between the target, in between, in between the scaling group, the auto scaling group, and the load balancer itself. The automatic scaling group feeds instances into the target group as required, uh, or also shrinks the target group as required. And the load balancer the other, on the other end, uh, accesses the instances that are in the target group. Now, the load balancer uh, will make towards the end, uh, and in the middle of that process, we'll need to create an SSL certificate because our load balancer is going to be accessed over HTTPS. And finally, we're going to point the domain of our URL to that load balancer. Okay, so that's a lot to do, and I've done this a few times, and there are some things that will get in the way. Um, as you go, you won't be able to go do it as quickly as I am because uh, in most cases, because this is something I've done for the fourth time in a row. Um, okay, so let's, what do we say we're going to do first? Make a security group. Okay, so let's make a security group. We already have an instance. So in our region, which in this case is Sydney, we're going to create a new security group. Actually, we have a security group that um, has almost got the same thing. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to copy that to a new security group. I'm going to cheat a little bit. Uh, I like to keep all of my little bits and pieces that I create with uh, a similar and easy to understand name. Otherwise it can get really confusing. Um, so it's our land services group. It's a lot easier if you just use the default VPC in your region as opposed to creating a custom one because some of the uh, networking stuff um, gets a bit, not, not really, it's not really hard, but it's a lot of unknowns that can get in the way. So if you can just get away with using the VPC, the default VPC, that's quite good. Okay, and uh, in our case, uh, we're going to, we're going to access on port 3000, the instances that are within the group, and we're going to need an NFS. NFS rule. And that NFS will be accessed by the current security group. So I'll actually have to come to come back and um, uh, change that. Because the NFS should only be accessed from instances that are, that are within the security group, not from the outside world. So this 0000 slash 0 is the outside world. Um, and in our case, the outside world is going to access your HTTPS. Okay. And SSH. And the outside world is actually not going to access this. Uh, in fact, let's go like that. Uh, and it's called just lame services. Now you may be better at this stuff than me, so um, don't. not everything that I do here is actually um, Probably the best way of doing things, but perhaps if you don't know how to do anything, uh, this will be helpful. Okay, so here we go. I've already made a mistake. Let's go back and look what I did. Um, oh, we already had an HTTPS one, so let's, let's remove that. Okay, uh, I'm actually going to come back and change these ones here because they shouldn't be visible to the entire world. But I don't know how to do it from that first page. I only know how to do it from when we're editing it. Okay, so now I'm going to change this to the security group that we just made, that one there. And also this one here is going to be from the security group that we just made. Okay, so just to summarize, we can access um, 
instances within the security group for your SSH with its world, uh, world visible over port 22 and you can also access the security group over port 443 uh, and these ones are only available NFS and custom TSCP which is 3000 they're only accessible from within the security group instances within the security group okay so that's good we now have our uh, security group made next thing is to make our elastic file system okay so here we have uh, our EFS we create file system uh, again we give this a name that is fairly easy for us to know what we're doing. We've only got one VPC and that's the one we want to use, the, uh, the default one. Okay, so the nice thing about creating your file system from the default VPC is you don't have to worry too much about the subnets because often the subnets you need to set them up if you create a custom VPC or to um, connect them to an internet gateway which can be um, which was something I had to learn how to do. Let's open this up and have a look at this one. Okay, so that's all good. Um, if we go to networking, we can see we already have three um, mounted, three mount points, which is really good because there's, those are the subnets that we talked about before, the availability zones and the subnets. So those are already set up for us. So that's a benefit of using the default VPC. Uh, great, so our file system is now ready to go. Do we need to set a security group on these ones? I just checked. We do actually need to set the security group. These are the default security groups and that's not what we want. So let's get rid of those. We want the language services security group that we just made a moment ago. You can actually have multiple security groups if that um, is meaningful for your, your setup. But we're just going to use those default ones. Oh, not the default ones, the ones we've just created. Okay, good. So now our Elastic File System is all set up. And we're going to go to the next step in our little process, which is to create a launch template. So from our EC2 dashboard, we go to, we already have an AMI, I'll just show you our AMI. That's this one here, Lang Services 2020 11, 17. So let's go to our launch templates and we'll create the template. This contains all the information about you know, how to launch, what kind of instance to set it to and other bits and pieces. So let's call this Lang Services launch template. Again, we've got some things there. Well, we are going to auto scale this, but we won't worry about those notes. That's actually quite helpful if you need them. Uh, and here we need to put the we need to search for the instance, the AMI image, sorry, that we're going to use. So that's why it's nice to have a name for it. That's easy to, to remember, so we can find it. Okay, there it is. There. Now the instance type. Now uh, this is something you'll need to think about. In our case, we're using C5A, which is really not cheap. Okay. Um, got a key already that we, we use the same key for all of our kind of stuff within the same region just to keep life easy. Um, virtual private cloud VPC, yep, that's good. Security group, we made one of those. There it is there. Um, storage volume, that's already done from our AMI image. And just down here, this is something you may or may not want to do, but in our case, um, we've got that Elastic File System, so that's going to have to be mounted when the instance is created. And since we're using the same image for different regions, we didn't want to put that mount point um, inside the image itself, so we can do that from the launch template. We can have a little script here that will run anything that needs to happen when the, uh, when the template is first instantiated into an instance. So I have a little script that I run here. And you can see, excuse me, in one of those, we're going to pull from Git our latest version of some software that we're running, uh, and we're going to set up that uh, file system that we've just we've just made. Now, in actual fact, the file system has a URL, but this is the uh, not the correct URL. So let's go back to our file system. We go to attach, 
and we will see our URL of our file system here. It's in the uh, Asia, Pacific, Asia Pacific Southeast 2 region. So can't be this one here, which is in the uh, Asia Pacific Northeast region. All right. Okay, so there we have our uh, launch template with uh, our initialization script and security group and AMI image all set. So we're getting pretty close to uh, completion. Now we want to make a target group uh, in which those instances will be created. So let's go to target groups. Create a target group uh, instances. Target group name is Lane services TG. Okay, and in our case, uh, these are going to be accessed via the load balancer on port 3000. So we put here port 3000 because it's a Node.js application. So on the, 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 uh, inside the security group, we're accessing that over port 3000. But from the outside world, that's coming in on port 433443, 443, which is the SSL port. Okay, there's our VPC, that's all good. Health protocol, that's going to ping our um, servers every few seconds and make sure they're up. So we just do that on the, uh, on the root URL. That's good. Next. Okay, here we can actually register some targets because we don't need to auto scale. We can actually manually create instances or use launch templates to create instances and put them in here. But we won't do that. We'll just create the target group for now. Okay, so the next thing is to make the auto scaling group from the target group. So here we go to the auto scaling group. Create auto scaling group. And we're going to call this main services ASG. And here's where our launch template comes in handy. Launch template. Uh, so these are the default settings from our launch template. There's a, another way of doing this called a launch configuration. Uh, this is a less flexible method that um, has been superseded by the launch template, apparently. Um, but you can still use it if the documentation that you're looking at wants you to do that. Um, and here we can just choose the defaults from the launch template, which is maybe a good thing to do. Uh, but in our case, I want to check that the um, instance is going to be created in a cost-effective way. So looking at this, we've got um, most of these, I actually just choose the, uh, the defaults because I don't really know what I'm doing. I just do my best. Okay, so it's all pretty good. Uh, we do need to we do need to uh, select our subnets. Luckily, we uh, have some because we use a default VPC and it made some uh, for us already. So that's good. Enable load balancing. That's the whole point of what we're doing. So let's do that. When we do that, we get to choose a target group for which to load balance against. Uh, then we've got the health check. So every 300 seconds, it's going to ping our server um, and, and make sure that it's healthy. Uh, so every three, uh, after the instance has booted up, it waits 300 seconds, which is five minutes, and then it does the first health check. Just leave that. I wouldn't bother to change it. Okay. Uh, now, what is the maximum and minimum capacity of our group? Okay, we're, we're, we're a real small time, so we're just going to have five possible maximum instances uh, and uh, desired capacity of one, minimum capacity of one. Target tracking scaling policy. Um, I'm not sure what happens if you choose none, but in our case we're looking at CPU. So if the CPU gets over, in our case, 65%, 65, yeah, 65 of usage, we want to bring on another server. Okay, next. Uh, you can add notifications here if you want to do that. Get to review all our options. Okay, all done. You have an auto scaling group. Okay, we're um, moving along, moving right along. The next part actually uh, has a few com little complexities that might get us, but let's let's do it anyway. We're going to make that load balancer. So we go to load balancers. Create our load balancer. This is the old one. Uh, you're supposed to use these ones, so let's use the application load balancer. Uh, again, we're going to call this something nice and easy for us. Main services load balancer. Internet uh, facing, yes, IP4, yep. Uh, now, in our case, we want to access it over HTTPS port 443. 
that's good. Here's our VPC, that's good. Uh, you'll see the VPC in the subnets and availability zones come up quite often, so that's why um, if you're creating a custom VPC, uh, that might that might require a bit more setup than if you're using the default one. Okay, and that's all looking pretty good. So what's going to happen now? Because we have this uh, HTTPS, we're coming in over SSL, is we need to have an SSL certificate, of course, and uh, AWS will provide that for us, which is really nice. Um, that's really good. We have no existing certificates. If we did, we could actually use those possibly. We're going to request a new one. Clicking this request a new certificate opens uh, in another tab the Amazon Certificate Manager. We put in here our domain name. In our case, it's going to be uh, Sydney. Sydney.ls.poodle.com. That's who we are. Uh, next. DNS validation. Yep. Uh, yep. Your tags. Okay, so uh, it's going to make us um, some little DNS C name tags that we can put into our uh, domain name registrar to, to verify that we own that domain. Okay. All right, so this is where you're going to have to uh, head off to your domain name registrar place thingy. So first of all, you just mouse over that and then you can copy it. Uh, we go over to our domain name registrar place thingy. Here's our one. And we go to add record. And we're going to add a C name. And we drop in that uh, name that we just got there from, from Amazon. Come back over here. Go over here. Command C. We get the value for that. Go back over here. Put that in here. Okay. Turn off the proxy. Okay. Okay, it's all done. Now we're going to have to come back here because we need to actually um, uh, set up, uh, similarly, we need to set up uh, a URL that's going to point to our load balancer, which will be, in our case, sydney.les.poodle.com. Um, but uh, we can't do that until we get the domain name, or the, uh, the internal domain, the, uh, the, the Amazon domain, of the load balancer. So that's a bit, the very final step that we're going to do over here. So we, we're nearly there, we're just creating this SSL certificate and we're just about done. So uh, we need to wait for this to validate and that's a bit of a hassle. Um, but it's quite good. Oh, it's already done. That's really good. Wow, that was fast. Terrific stuff. So now we go back over to our uh, load balancer setup wizard that we're going through. Uh, we refresh the little icon beside the selection box for the certificate name and there is our newly created certificate. All good. Um, next, we configure our security groups. We have a security group. We made that, so we remove that from there. Okay, to configure the routing. Now we have a target group. We don't want a new one. We made that a few moments ago, and there it is. There, it's all all populated for us. Register targets. Well, that's what's going to be in the uh, the target group, the instances. That's already been made because there's an instance already there because our um, auto scaling group um, kicked in right away. So we've actually already got an image made from um, our launch template that we made just a few moments ago. Great. Great, and our load balancer is all ready to go. Almost, not quite. It's provisioning. Um, but we can still go and have a look at it. Um, and the main thing we want to see here, which I mentioned to you earlier, is this DNS name. I'm going to use this. Uh, back over on my domain name registrar. Here we go here, I'm going to add another C name. And this one is going to be C name. This one's going to be sydney.ls.poodle.com. Okay, target will be the domain name of the Amazon load balancer. Okay, and sydney.ls.poodle.com is going to go there. Save. Oh, actually we don't want to proxy that, so let's, let's just edit that. Okay, proxy that. This is just a peculiarity of uh, if you're using something like uh, Cloudflare to manage your domain. Okay, back to AWS. Um, I'm just going to have a look at our instances. 
Okay, so just to kind of recap what we did and to, to show you that it is working. This instance is a new one. It's been actually created from our launch template. It wasn't there previously. Uh, if we go to our target groups, open up the uh, target group, and we click on targets, you'll see that instance is in there. Okay, and the status is initial, which means it's not actually ready yet. It's still booting up, still getting ready for us. But once it is ready, that will um, that will turn green. It will say healthy. If it's not accessible at that uh, at that health check URL, which we looked at before, which in this case is just the root URL, which would be sydney.alice.poodle.com, uh, then it will say unhealthy. It'll be a little red red mark there, and it might bring on another target automatically from our launch template to to make up for that. Okay, well, there it is. It's gone healthy even as we spoke. That's pretty good, isn't it? Well, provided now that our um, domain name has gone through okay, uh, we should actually be able to access our servers behind our load balancer. That would be pretty cool. So why don't we try that? So let's go HTTPS sydney.ls.poodle.com. Oh, not oodle. Oodle. Oodle's a poodle. Okay, sydney.alias.poodle.com, and we should get just a tiny little wee form there. There you go. Okay, so we actually went all the way through um, uh, of that domain name to the load balancer, which took us down to the selected instance from the target group, uh, and all the networking worked, and it returned our page for us. So that was a big success. Um, it doesn't look like much, but that's what it was. So first of all, we made the AMI image, um, which is actually we already, didn't, we already had that. We made a security group, um, then we made an elastic file system. Uh, we uh, made a launch template, and we added into the launch template a little script, which which, would, which loaded the file system for the elastic file system uh, as, a, as a local drive. Then we made a target group into which to launch the, the instances um, from the template. We made an auto-scaling group, which would uh, manage the uh, you know, the, the triggering of launches or the shrinking or the removal of uh, instances that uh, we didn't need anymore into the target group. Then we make the load balancer. The load balancer uses all of those things that we've just created, uh, but uh, it also requires an SSL certificate, which we had to go off and make. But Amazon's certificate manager actually prepared that for us, which was free and fast and really good. Uh, and finally, we just uh, pointed out domain to the load balancer and it sparked up. Okay, so that's how to make an AWS Elastic Load Balancer. Uh, it might take you a little bit longer than, than, than I did because I set that one up ready to go because I have done a few in a row today, but um, hopefully that it's helpful for you.